once again we see a beautifully slippery elegant sailing yacht in this Hammond Frères designed Holberg Rassi 50. We are slipping along here matching or exceeding true wind speeds both upwind with the Genoa and now with the Code Zero. This is a 25 ton laden go anywhere cruising yacht and yet yeah, it's showing that you can really enjoy light wind performance as well. I mean granted it's got a very handsome premium extra option rig package here, the first seldom carbon in mast furling mainsail, an Elstrom Epex vertically battened Technora black heavy duty cruising sail, the carbon boom, carbon mast, carbon spreaders, rod rigging, a lovely big code zero. I mean that whole rig package will set you back an extra over a hundred thousand euros. But yeah it's certainly helping us sailing along sweetly here. No need for the engine even though we've only had an average of two to five knots. So the reason I'm lingering here there's the key to this hull shape this modern Frere's hull shape is that the beam is taken right off. It's more, it's more beam, overall beam than the 55 and the beam is taken much further off. So there's over a meter at the transom more beam. The mast is taken further aft, which means everything in terms of the accommodation is shifted further aft and enjoys that beam. So you start with a big sail locker, which pushes the forward cabin further aft. You have this big large flush foredeck area then you get the more beam in the saloon itself and also the beam around the cockpit means that the you know the combings are actually set out more you so you get more headroom below them in the galley you get more width in the cockpit you get wide side side decks uh, and you get the depth in the cockpit as well so this <laughs> it really doesn't if, if you like the shape, if you like seeing a, a sort of wider beamed modern type boat, plumb stem, extra waterline length, there's no real bad side to it. Uh, you just gain a load more room, which we'll show you on the inside. And it's certainly not affecting upwind performance or light wind performance here, as we're proving now. And then wait till you see what you get space-wise in the owner's cabin. We're now averaging seven knots in just eight knots true wind speed. 60 degrees a pound. This is pretty impressive light wind sailing for an ocean cruising yacht. So this is life at heel and under sail. Good grab bar up above us here. And these excellent solid handrails fiddle surrounding all of the work surfaces. Easy to move about. And a pretty good view to boot. Okay, we're lucky enough to have Magnus on board, Magnus Rassi on board the new 50 here in La Rochelle. It's a big boat, Magnus. Please tell us about the, how you've managed to create this much space in 50 feet. Yeah, this is a new 50 footer and it's a modern hull shape with a classic touch at the same time, but it gives a, a very long water line, almost as long as the hull length. And it's a wide boat with the width carried far off, so we get a lot of volume inside the boat. And we have a mast position relatively far aft, and we have moved the whole interior correspondingly more aft. So then automatically everything gets wider and more spacious. And we have made some other design tricks. 
for example, uh, the generator was on that side before in the engine room and took quite some space. Now it's in line, the main engine and the generator, and that creates more space for the interior. And we have a hull stiffener that goes up all the way to the deck, which stiffens up the boat, which make it possible to to lower the bulkheads. The bulkheads here are no longer structural because we have the structure in the hull stiffener. And that gives more distance between the bulkheads. We get a longer sofa and we get lower bulkheads and more spacious feeling. So the boat feels larger than the previous 55 footer and it actually is larger inside uh, uh, than the 55 footer, although it's five foot shorter but a half a meter longer water line. That's quite not. Yeah, excellent. Well, let's take a look around. Thank you. Yes, please. So as Magnus says, you have an astonishing amount of space and light on here. A lot more comparable really to, I would say a 55, 57 foot center cockpit blue water cruiser to what we have been accustomed to. So this really is a modern generation boat in that respect. And you just take a look everywhere you look around. It's really a huge amount of space to use for this length of boat and what we've been accustomed to with 50 feet. So this is a, quite a tried and tested format really and really nice to have chart table just where you want it. Nice wet hanging locker in here right next to the engine room so that will dry properly. Plenty of space and yeah this one finished finished in oak but obviously you can have more traditional mahogany but the oak really helps give you that light plus of course all of these natural the windows flooding it with natural light and the hull port lights you'll also notice those coach roof windows forward facing ones open as well for ventilation um, it's, it's really impressive finish well that shouldn't be a surprise from Holberg Rassi um, but I mean here's an example look at the traditional switchboard here and glance at the wiring access behind it Look how neatly that's installed with every wire labelled and type of fuse to go with it. Maintenance and access to all the services you need in the boat are first class. There's also more of it below here. These seats lift up uh, and that butterfly is open to give you access to more of the wiring and black box gadgetry behind. So there's also space below this nav station but you get that shelf for your library of pilot books etc this can also be a um, galley a u-shaped galley if you don't choose the linear galley format however magnus says that linear galley format is chosen by 90 95 percent of it of the clients now here's the the layout options so instead you can have this u-shaped galley instead of the linear and you can also have split berths in either of the cabins not that that is a popular option at all saloon table the leaf on the outside here on the on the outboard side drops down so you can put your lee cloth up and use this saloon berth here as a pilot berth and there's a sofa option as Harbour Grassi usually do with their saloons here really lovely bar area and once you sit in one of these armchairs you'll understand just how comfortable it can be sitting in here look at the world go by or press the button and watch your flat screen 50 inch tv raise up from the starboard side of the saloon there very nicely done indeed bar area with stormproof casing there for you crystal glasses and look how well this mast base has been integrated you don't even know that's a keel step mast but it's integrated behind here and then you move forward into a companionway area where and a hallway area where you have the heads which is shared by the midships cabin and the forward cabin so a single entrance here into it that good size with a separate shower there and plenty of stowage space there is loads of stowage space around this boat so midships cabin good size double this or well, compact double sorry but this double stays even if you choose to have a Pullman bunk in here as well again great raised stowage and nice big 
hanging locker. All the lockers are lit and ventilated as well. And then moving forward into the forward guest cabin. Again, lots of light, thanks to that double overhead hatches there. Loads of stowage. And yeah, look how much beam you have forward there because forward of that is, is the sail locker. And as Magnus said, everything has been brought aft to enjoy the maximum amount of beam on this boat. Good size wardrobe each side. There's also uh, stowage below this aft part of this berth as well. I really don't think storage is going to be an issue on this boat though. The other thing you'll notice here walking aft is the single level sole, which is a pretty unique thing to be able to do on a, this sort of size centre cockpit cruiser. And it just makes moving through the boat really easy, whether at, at sta whether being stationary or at heel. Um, and yes, this is a linear galley, but look how practical it is as a seagoing galley, because you have this section here uh, and you can brace yourself on either side, despite whichever tack you're on, you've got good bracing either side because uh, you've got the inboard double sink. And you don't know if you can see this, but excellent built-in fiddles here, which are uh, you know strong enough to be handrails as well. The other thing, main thing to mention about this galley is the amount of cold stowage. In this format, you get four fridges or freezers. So three of them could be either and this fridge back here as well. Again, plenty of storage space and light and ventilation. So you have opening into the cockpit there, this one opening and an extraction fan above the induction stove, which is a combination of microwave below and induction hob. And that's an option, but it runs off the inverter. Uh, so you don't need to use the generator to run it. Uh, it's quite a nice smart solution there. Integrated spice rack, nicely done, and these drop down cold stowage. And these are also, these raised lockers here, nice and deep as well. So they go right out or to the hull sides. And then there's more below the sink area, including a small bin below this double sink and further aft dishwasher obviously an option and they use these pegs on here customizable sizes to keep all your china and crockery from falling around at sea moving aft into the owner's cabin really it's a formidable amount of space again really the beam so that extra one meter just over a meter's beam compared to the old Holberg Rassi 55 and look how much more natural light you've got as well particularly around the berth itself so those double opening hatches and the aft facing coach roof window just flood it in light sides here which actually keep you into the berth itself but you can have lee cloths as well i also think this desk area is a really nice feature to have a bit of privacy away from the guests or the family crack on with a bit of work should you wish to and uh yeah just a sofa area on the port side again lots lots of stowage surrounding the berth itself Although under the berth is, is all technical area really, so stern thruster and air con and batteries. And then you've got the ensuite heads and separate shower in here as well. Really nicely done. I mean, mod cons you'd expect the electric heads and stuff, but just little neat features like the, the mirrors themselves are angled so you don't have to crouch down to look it into them nice deep sink with a lip around it so that water's not spilling over it you've got your room to put your feet underneath it as well a little seat in the shower there and um yeah this hanging rail for the towels but it's a it's a heated one as well so just 
that's running off the inverter turn that on dry your towels and this is the washing machine in here which is integrated into the actual engine room space so nicely insulated in there and you can remove it from the inside of the engine room uh, should you need to change the washing machine it can come out through the cockpit sole hatch um, which is bolted down where you can actually take the engine out of we'll have a look at the engine room now and another classic Holberg Rassi feature is to have the walk-in engine room so three-quarter height door open that look at the thickness of the insulation on it and then you come into this area here with the gen set in line with the engine and just a brilliantly laid out area to be able to access now those that's the companionway steps forward there so they that all opens up that panel there for access to that side of the engine but yeah everything neatly mounted on panels obviously varnished mahogany panels at that nothing nothing less from Harbour Grassy you've got the uh the fuel filters neatly mounted up here and for the gen set as well and you can change those filters while the engine's going along apparently and then a oil change pump here and there's also a fuel pump further forward of the engine as well in case you get um in case you get anything in the fuel itself just really neatly done and just so nice to have all of this insulation and space surrounding it uh, so that's the washing machine that sits behind this area here and really well labelled. And that's the view with the companionway steps lifted there for that forward access into the engine room. Also a nice bit of stowage below that last step as well. There's also these quarter lockers as well, fenders and lines each side. And owners would either go for davits or if you don't want to spoil the look of the boat. As Magnus does on this one, he keeps his tender on the foredeck, on, the, on that flat part of the coach roof of the foredeck. The aft deck just has a simple cleated drop-down bathing platform and as I said the option to have two davits to take, to take a dinghy or to put the dinghy on the fore deck. A couple more things to point out nice details here particularly on this carbon rig is the integrated preventer here it runs along the boom that hook will go forward to the forward cleat so that when you're sailing downwind you can hook that to the forward cleat there's the line to tie it off here and then while we're at the mast itself these hydraulic pumps the jacks here for the halyards for the main and for the jib halyard the genoa halyard so what that means is that you can tie them off and you lose all of the long tail area of the ropes that you can put away in a locker And the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice there's no anchor on this boat. Normally, you would see where it comes out of the anchor locker and it would sit on a bow roller, integrated into that bow script. But the bow script was destroyed during the delivery in a collision. So Magnus rebuilt this one in the last week. Did a pretty good job too. Nice big sail locker as well. Separate chain locker further forward. Some controls for the windlass. And a deck wash system. It's pretty versatile this Co Zero. So we only have about 10 knots of true. So just seven and a half apparent. We're 
flying it at 150 degrees to the true wind or 130 to the apparent breeze so you know that's pretty deep and with a bit more wind you can imagine you can do some pretty deep reaching sails with this and the other benefit is you just keep the thing up all the time you keep it furled in front of the Genoa so it's ready to unleash at the touch of a button no socks, no spinnakers, no messing around. Just showing that upwind angle of this code zero. It's a pretty versatile sail. Sailing it sort of up to about 40, 45 degrees to the apparent wind here. And it's a big sail as well, so there's just plenty of area when we go reaching off the wind as well. So this is proving you can do nice performance sailing on a 25 ton blue water cruising yacht. It's really easy, enjoyable sailing in pretty flat water light wind conditions. We're sailing along at an average of seven and a half to eight knots in just 10 knots of breeze. And yes, it's got a lovely carbon mast and performance sails, but this is where this hull shape not only buys you all that volume down below but got all that extra water line and it just slips along and it's a really fun sailing boat to handle for one person to handle easily from the helm yeah i really like it